morning. It really is amazing what happens when we put God at the center of our lives in every season as we open our hearts to God's presence and God's movement in and through us, knowing that God is with us through anything and everything, changes how we cope, how we rejoice, how we grieve. And today, as I begin this message on spiritual practices, I want to share what some of you already know and some of you will be hearing just for the very first time. Bonnie Green, who is the wife of Reverend Norm Green, and who together really were the founding pastors of North Bramall East Church, died this week from complications from cancer. Her funeral is today at 2 p.m. in this church that, John, that Bonnie was so instrumental in building. Bonnie's vision for this church was that we would reach easily a thousand people and more each and every Sunday, not only people here in the sanctuary, but joining us online and other communities coming in and coming aware of this loving God who, who, who we serve. I invite your prayers for Norm and for Kristen and Nat to his daughters, their daughters, and their families as well. And we'll be setting up for the funeral immediately after this service. The service is at 2 o'clock today. And so we thank you for your help uh, uh, to be able to do that. The other sad news that I have to share is that Rob Brown, our bass player for so many years, as well as a driver behind the concerts to uh, be able to implement and pay for our new audiovisual system, and just an all-around great guy, passed away peacefully on Friday night with his wife Anne and family by his side after a long and courageous journey with pancreatic cancer. You may know that Rob lived out his initial diagnosis by over a year, and we are so grateful for the extra time that we had with him. The service to celebrate Rob's life will take place next Saturday here at this church that he too loves, and it will be at 11 o'clock in the morning with visitation ahead of time. More information will come out through the week. I invited your prayers for Norm and his family and for Rob's family as well. And you may wonder, what does it mean when, she's, when I say, you know, to hold someone in prayer or invite you to do it? Well, for me, I mean a couple of things. When I say that, is that the first thing I want is that the person I am praying for will know that I am praying for them, that they are not alone in life or in death or in life beyond death, and that my prayer is lifting up them and their needs to God, even though God already knows what it is that they're needing, that in prayer we are all connected, me and the person and God, and that brings us strength and healing that, that I think prayer invites us into. When I say I'll pray for you, I commit to thinking about you, to having my heart opened to you and to God and whatever actions might need to follow after that. When I say that I will pray for you, we, we discover that God is in our midst. And remember the scripture in Jeremiah where God says, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. And so that invitation is for all of us. When we engage in spiritual practices like prayer and reading scripture, we don't do it to win brownie points with God or to show how pure and pious we are. And for those of you who have known me, are those ever two words that you've used around me? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but regular, intentional, spiritual practices help us to know who we are and who God is. As the Apostle Paul said when he wrote to the church in Rome, whoops, that really skipped a lot. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Being in a relationship changes you, does it not? How many here are in relationships with people? Yeah, right? We all are. And don't they change you? I mean, some make better, some not so much. <laughs> but relationships change you. Well, can you imagine... If today, if you haven't already, that you chose to be in a relationship with Jesus, imagine how your life will so 
completely change from the inside out. And prayer is one of the most powerful ways I know to be into that open relationship with God. For some of you, engaging in prayer is and reading scripture is the beginning of your journey, or you're in the be- beginning of that journey of getting to know God. And for some of you, this has been a lifelong journey that you've been a part of. We've named spiritual practices as one of the bullseye markers. And bullseye is really just shorthand around here for this book that Jamie and I wrote about our experiences with the North Bramley community. And there are more copies out there if you want them. The book is called Bullseye, Aiming to Follow Jesus. And we looked at six markers, beginning with spiritual practices, worshiping together weekly, being a part of an authentic community, which includes small groups, serving because we follow Jesus who said, I came to serve, not to be served, giving generously and sharing Christ. And we've learned that the spiritual practices are a great way to begin or to deepen our relationship with God. You never hit or cross the finish line. I don't know of one person who has got all of these six markers down completely nailed and never have to think about them again. It's always an ongoing process of deepening your relationship with God. And that's what an intentional, disciplined spiritual practice like reading scripture or praying, practicing prayer can do. I think that prayer forms the foundation of our relationship with God. We wrote in the book, many people think of prayer as trying to get God to perform some kind of magic or knock items off of our wish list of needs or wants. You know, like where we pray to God, okay, God, this is what I need you to do today. (laughs) However, when we talk about fixing our attention on God, it takes us to a much different place. We begin to see things differently. Instead of trying to get God on board with our agenda, we discover that maybe life would work out better if we got on board with God's agenda. What would it look like for us to listen for God's leading and then follow? Because when that happens, we are changed from the inside out. We started this year looking at the unstuck, about getting unstuck, like so many of us can get into ruts and patterns um, that are not helpful to us. We've just finished doing a series on forgiveness, and, and I think for many of us, it really touched places deep in our hearts and our minds. And, and for some people, it has led to be able to take a next step with God by leaning in for prayer. Our community here has learned about the transformational power of prayer. You know, when you come in today, you experience certain things, but it wasn't always like this. It's been part of our journey to have people in the prayer corners every week so that you can go and have someone pray for you who, who are praying for each and every one of us and for God's presence here throughout the service to be able to experience soaking prayer in between the services or come to a healing service like the one on Tuesday night and experience that powerful presence of God to heal and bring peace. To see people just stopping folks in the aisles and in the hallways and and in coming out of their conversation saying, can I pray for you? And seeing people all over the place doing that. We have folks who allow their names to go into the prayer corner of our bulletin because they know that people take those bulletins home and pray for them throughout the week. It doesn't matter that you don't know what it is that they are seeking. You're praying for God's healing, peace, and presence, and their awareness of that. And we have a prayer chain where sometimes there's someone who just needs something really immediate in prayer or they want to remain anonymous. And we send out requests on a prayer chain of a group of dedicated people who will hold you and your concerns in prayer. In 2019, one of our key initiatives is 24-7 prayer because we can't even begin to imagine the change that's going to happen in our community, in our families, in Brampton and beyond when we bathe 168 hours a week in prayer. And just as an aside, next week there'll be a sign-up sheet because at the end of March we're going to dip another toe in the water and go for 48 hours a week this at the end of March. And you can sign up for an hour of that. And if an hour seems like forever to you, believe me, it will fly by. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, 
used to ask this question, is it well with your soul? And so today I'm inviting you to answer that question. Is there a, uh, something in your life where you would really like to have your heart open more to God's presence? Then I'm going to encourage you to try some spiritual practices. But I didn't want you to leave here today with a homework assignment. Because who wants to do homework, really? I didn't want to say, go home and pray. Go home and read scripture. So today I wanted to give you an opportunity to experience centering prayer that Sue Willard is going to be able to lead us in. Sue has taught over 120 people here at North Bramalee and beyond about this practice of opening our hearts and minds to God's presence with silence. For some of you, the practice of centering prayer is already part of your, your regular routine and practice. For others of you, this might be a, just a taste and see and introduction. For some of you who are online, you're going to say, why is it so quiet there? What are they doing? And we're just inviting you to pray as well and just to see what God will do in that practice. As Sue is coming up here, I'm just going to invite you to watch this video of some people here from North Bramalee who engage in, in centering prayer regularly and the difference that they're seeing it make in their lives. First, I was very skeptical, thinking, I don't know if I can sit for 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, and do this. But to know almost a week later, it's like, oh, it started to become part of a routine. And it's a different way of prayer for me. I was always used to like verbal prayers, talking to God that way. This is complete silence. And it really, really, I like it because it's so different. And I really feel that relationship deepening with Jesus. And I think with other people too. I just feel that um, I'm probably listening to them more. I'm just more attentive. I'm more attentive to where God is speaking to me, I think. I just feel that I just have a better relationship with them all around. Centering prayer for me has been a new practice. And so the joy I would feel on Sundays after seeing Jamie and Debbie and hearing their stories, I'd feel blissed out until Sunday afternoon, evening, and then it would dissipate. But with Centering Prayer, I have that feeling every day, Monday through Saturday, until I see Jamie and Debbie again. And so it's almost like having breakfast with Jesus. So in doing the Centering Prayer this fall, one of the terms um, I chose to focus on was gentle love. And I think that's so much of how God has worked with me is when I can slow down enough to be more present God is right there waiting. And so it's been just a very gentle time of renewing a spark that I felt like I had lost for quite a while. And so I'm just really celebrating that God works in each of us in very unique ways. It doesn't have to be fireworks. It can be those little moments. So I think what I'm learning more and more is to be present in this moment. This moment's the gift. And when I'm more present, God's everywhere. I don't get as, as uh, emotionally tied up in some of the stressful situations that hit on a daily basis. It doesn't seem to matter if I'm talking to someone going through significant emotional stress, um, if I'm in the middle of a um, uh, emotional confrontation, um, I'm able to hold the idea, the thought, uh, whatever the topic is, out in the palm of my hand a lot easier uh, so that in a lot of ways I can be a lot more effective and I don't allow my own emotions to cloud the picture and, and the emotions of the individual to influence me more than uh, they really should. Uh, or could. My husband is wondering what's up with you. So he's constantly late all the time. He's always late. It's just the way he is. And with prayer, I'm finding that there's an acceptance and a patience that I never had before. And he's so grateful that uh, Sue has taught centering prayer to me. Bit of humor there in the benefits of centering prayer, but very practical. 
The offering video encouraged us um, all to have God at the center of our lives. And the video interviews that we just saw show that having a spiritual practice helps us to both deepen our walk with Jesus and connect with people in our lives. So instead, as uh, Debbie said, instead of just talking about a spiritual practice, um, I'd like to lead you through an actual experience of centering prayer. Um, centering prayer is an ancient Christian practice which helps us open up to the presence of God within. Prayer is a relationship with God. And when we think of prayer, we often think of thoughts or words as in vocal prayer, but centering prayer is different. It's a form of Christian silent prayer, and it is very easy to do, as you'll see. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. It's a call to set aside all activity, to rest in silence, and become more aware of his presence within. There, um, it's simple. It's effortless. Uh, it's a wonderful method of silent prayer. There are no prerequisites. You start where you are on your spiritual journey and deepen what you already have. So how do we do this practice? Well, um, there are four guidelines, and they're on the screen there. This is guideline number one. Choose a sacred word as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. So we do use a sacred word, a word of one or two uh, syllables um, that resonates with you. If one pops into your head, then use that. And um, But for today, if you don't want to think about that, you could use Jesus or peace or love. The second guideline is sitting comfortably and with eyes closed, Settle briefly and silently start thinking the sacred word as the symbol of your consent to God's presence and action within. And the action is the healing, transformative action that uh, God will facilitate uh, when we sit quietly for 20 minutes. Guideline number three, when other thoughts come, and there will be other thoughts, um, return ever so gently to the sacred word. And number four, the last one, at the end of the prayer period, remain in silence with eyes closed for a couple of minutes. So I am going to be t keeping track of time. Um, but, uh, and at the end of our time, I will say amen. And um, we usually start and end centering prayer with a prayer. So I'm going to say a prayer. So if everyone could just bow their heads. Gracious Father, your will be done in us as we experience centering prayer, many for the first time. Let's close our eyes, take a deep breath, then to start thinking your sacred word.
Amen. Stop saying your sacred word inside and sit with eyes closed while I say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>